begin today we're going to look at many chapters. So I hope you go back to reread those chapters. Um, but before we get into the word of God, let's pray. Father God, we praise and thank you, Lord. Every Sunday here we want to worship you. Every Sunday here we want to hear your voice. And now we want to hear what you want to say to us. You give us power and strength to act on it, to live out with your words. So speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you, who knows the American history very well? How many states we have? 50. 50, okay. Are they all one day half and 50 states? No? Okay, that's gradually, right? Where you join the United States, right? So who know who is the first one joined the United States? Who's the first one in the first states? Huh? Whoa, that one, that is pretty good. Do you know what year? 1796. Uh, I don't know. Earlier. <laughs> 1787. Okay, that one is the first one. How about the last one? The last one? Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh. What year? Wow. It's really good. We got a historian here, huh? Wow. Yeah, Hawaii is the last one to the United States, 1951. So there's how many years in between? <laughs> 1959. How many years? Who's good at math? Huh? 1787, 1959. Two centuries, not two centuries. Around. Sorry, thank you. Wow. Hey. Very good. Okay. So you can see. Take a 573 years for America to become what we have today. And you know how many, there's many battles in between, right? Can you name a few battles uh, after the independence war? Before that? The uh, first war, yeah, that's the first one. But how about after that? Spence, okay. How? What else? 18, what? 1812, right? So, or some by purchasing. And that's why it gradually finally have 50 states. So, the same, similar way, we're going to look at Joshua. God asked him to get into the promised land. But it's not right away. He can get all any piece of land. So you can see that red one is is earlier stage and gradually get every state incorporated to the United States. Okay, let's review the structure of Joshua. How many chapters is the book of Joshua? Very easily, okay? We have 24 chapters, okay? And each chapter half is what? 12 chapters. So the first 12 chapters talk about conquering the land, right? And it takes take seven years. Remember we talk about, and then Second part is divide the land. So very easy, just have 12 chapters. What's the first chapter we're talking about, Joshua? What's the first chapter we're we'll talking about? Here? God asked Joshua to what? Be, be strong and courageous. courageous. In the second chapter, what happened? He's Spy which city? He sent spy to which city? Jericho. And met the lady there. What's the lady's name? What's the lady's name? Yeah. Red hat. Very good. Okay. And uh, chapter 3, what happened? They crossed the Jordan. Alright. Chapter 4, they set out the memorial store. How many parts? Two piles, very good, okay? Number five, the seven sides at yoga and then celebrate the Passover. So this five things just prepare. Just prepare 
to get into the, the concrete layer. Now the second part is six to nine in the, con the central campaign. We talk about Jericho, right? And after Jericho, which city? I, very good. And today we're going to continue after I, the southern and northern. We just need to show you this map, okay? That's the strategy of Joshua. He first conquered the middle, Jericho here, eyes here, right? <coughs> After that, he goes south and then go north and then conquer the west. What does that mean? Remember, at the beginning, Joshua. The Moses died. God called Joshua. I promise you, I'm going to give you this land. Alright? The enemies of your foot will try upon, I will give it to you. Wow, it's great! I got all this land. And do you know the walk, the steps? It's not just taking a walk. Every step is what? Every step is a battle. Okay? Yes, God promised us. God promised Joshua, I'm going to give you all this land. But doesn't mean, go, okay, great, then I can sit. I can just lay back. I can wait. I just go to collect. No. Even God already promised you, God will land. But every inch of land requires us to fight. You see, the Joshua, you fight for many years. So, all right? Are you. Are you with me? Many people thought, oh, I believe in Jesus, I become a Christian. You know, everything will be great. Alright? My great will be, oh, oh, straight A, I'm going to go to good school, oh, everything is good. Is that true? No. No. Alright? Yes. God gave us eternal life, but still many areas require us to fight for it. Take battle to win. So don't just. Ah, be surprised, okay? Our life, our journey, go to the battle. So when you have a battle, so you must have what? Enemies, right? So who are the enemies? You're not just fighting with air, right? Who is the enemy? You need to fight, so who are the enemies? Hitites. Huh? Hitites. Hitites. <laughs> okay, those cannibals, okay? But in our life, who are your enemies? Uh, I don't want to say it, but there's someone very close to you, right? Who are your enemy? Actually, we're going to see three enemies. Number one, Satan is our enemy. Okay? Satan is our devil. Actually, this is not a good representative. Oh, look, that's kind of cute, right? Oh, Satan can have it all. We know that Satan. But in the real life, actually, he probably won't recognize it. Because the Bible said, the Satan will act like an like, like angel, like a good angel. So actually, you won't recognize it. But we know from the Bible, Satan is the first angel. Who is the Satan? <laughs> Satan also created is archangel. It's the chief highest rank of angel. Lucifer, Lucifer. yes. You look at it, Ezekiel or Isaiah. They talk about this angel is so beautiful, it is so great. And that he's so proud, he won't be like God. He said, Oh, I'm so good. Why am I going to be under God? No, I want to be like God. And that's why God cast Satan down from heaven. And he, Bible said, the one third of angel followed him. And that's why we have all this trouble here. So we need to realize Satan is our first enemy. And Satan doesn't mean he wants us to tempt us to sin. He wants us to distort the word of God. To distort the image of God. Remember, when Adam and Eve and God of Eden, Satan said, the serpent, right? Say to Eve, Eve said, God didn't really say that. Right? 
God told to Eve, say, if you eat this fruit, you're going to die. And the Satan said, no, 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 no. You're not going to die. You see, he's, he's checked it. It's very subtle. He said, try to destroy the word of God. And you have wrong image. And then, oh, God doesn't want you to eat because God doesn't want you to know good and evil. Means like, God is not good. And he started to trust God. And that's usually what Satan does. So we need to know that our first enemy is Satan. And the first one, and what's, what are our, our enemies? The world. Okay? The world. This world doesn't mean the material, the physical world, okay? We know God created heaven and earth, and He said everything is good. But the world here is a world system, alright? The system under influence, under control of Satan. So the Bible says, the Second Corinthians 4 4 say, Satan actually is the God of this world, and it's blind the mind of unbelievers. All this system, entertainment, Organization, business, all this public, arts, music, all this is not under the influence of God, it's under the influence by Satan. And you can see many people, they trap in that, right? You want to make money, you get trapped in the money. You want to be beautiful, you want to be successful, and you trap. And that's the end. You may not realize. So, this is our second enemy. We need to know. Not be trapped on all these things because that's behind Satan. That's first uh, John 2 15 say, Do not love this world. If you love this world, then your love of God will be there. And what's the, is, what the thing in this world? The desire of the flesh, and the desire of the eye, and the pride of life. Do you know those are your enemies? You desire all these things and you let God out. Many things very good, very good things. Oh, you love your uh, family. Yeah, but you let God out. Step become your enemy. You, you want to be successful. God wants you to be successful too. But if you, with that, and you sacrifice God, and that become your enemy. So that, be very careful. What's the next enemy? Huh? Wow. Pretty good. Awesome. The evil within us, right? How <laughs> oh, you, you know this, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. I want the uh, I have the good meaning, right? Yeah. But actually, there's something within us could be right away become purple, right? I think as a parents, you may know. Wow, one day your one day your baby so cute, but one day oh, why so miserable? Because there's some evil within us. Bible calls us sin. So we need to deal with that within us. Paul said, there's a two things in me. I want to do this good, but I couldn't do it. And actually, what if there's a sin within me, do it. So we need to realize our biggest enemy is not other people. It is the sin within us. You compare to God and oh, why put these people in? It's so difficult for me to love. Maybe you need to realize that the enemy is inside, say, because you have sin inside, so you couldn't love this person. So, we need to know this is our enemy. Although it's still very cute, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now you know what you're fighting for. And we're fighting is not we do not wrestle against flesh or blood, but against the ruler, against the authority, against the cosmic power over the present darkness, against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly places. So are you ready to fight? <coughs> Too often we Christians just say, I want to avoid, right? I don't want to fight. But Either way, we're in the midst of this very severe battle. And we're not fighting with flesh, we're fighting with the spiritual power. And another thing you didn't realize that it's also a long war. Right? It's a long one. Joshua, take war 
a long time with all those kings, right? He fight middle central, central campaign, south, north, probably how many years? Seven years. Do you know what are the longest war in you know, like human history they fight? What's the longest war? You say how many years? Hundred years. Hundred years. Historians. What else? One other war fight longer. My like World War II is um, China fight with Japan. Eight years, wow, oh. between the war, right? Eight years. So we didn't realize spring, fishing life is always a battle, all right? One thing you criticize, you can rest. Boom, and nothing happened, right? Isn't that, okay? We all thought, ah, I can settle a little bit. Boom, then something happened again. So this is ongoing, all right? So we need to be prepared. Be ready. Are you ready? So now, how are we going to fight? Okay, we know our life is a battle. But we also know God gave us a promised land, right? The promised land is the battle, the fight to get it. And this is going to be a long process. How are we going to fight? First, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You look at these chapters many times. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, for tomorrow at this time I will give over all of them this land to Israel. The background is that all these enemies, not just one king, they gather around the country to attack Israel. And the Bible said, There's so many like sand, the people just like sand. Wow. If you face such a big enemy, what would you do? And remember, Israel only a small tribe, and this is facing so many enemies. But God said, do not be afraid. So I said to people next to you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. afraid. Alright? Do not be afraid. Too often we run with gusty, oh, what a, what a, wow. Do not be afraid. Even if you see the enemy is so many. Alright? Uh, the Bible said you need to resist the devil and the devil free. Alright? Don't be afraid. You need to resist this. Alright? We Christians often think, ah. have you heard about this? Oh, you're going to start serving God. And they said, oh, you see so many people, so many trouble happen to you. Then, ah, don't serve. You see, when you're going to serve God, Satan is going to attack you, right? They said, ah, then I quit. Ah. Actually, before he's alive, that's exactly what Satan wants to do. Right? Ah, it's not you don't fight and you'll be fine. No, actually, you're worse. Because your spiritual life will never grow and go to the strong, strong more, and then he can involve you. So I encourage you, and I really get to see so many young people start to serve the Lord. The praise team, they all take initiative, and the new semester come, many new Sunday school teacher, are you going to do? You're going to serve. Be prepared. You may run into some trouble. You may run into some uh, comfort. And you can say, forget it! Why did you do all this? Right? So often we can, we can think about it. But that's Satan wanting you to be scared, be afraid. We need to continue to press on and, and use the Satan to be defeated, to run away. So I, I would encourage you to serve. And, and really, like, that serve will make you stronger. If you never serve, you can sit there for a whole life just worship there. And you just don't just live. But God has greater promise for your life. And it's going to through you to serving the Lord, even small capacity. And then you're going to grow. I like this verse in the song that said, uh, We are like a bird trapped in the snake. But the snare has been broken. So many people of us, we are trap in that. How are we going to pay this mortgage? How are we going to survive for tomorrow? Right? You got so worried about life. You got so worried about so many things. But you can shout and say, The snare has been broken. Right? Satan tries to scare you. He said, oh, if you don't bow down to me, you cannot survive. If you don't do this, you cannot survive. If you don't go to tutor school to skip Sunday, then you cannot have a good SAT. Forget it! Come to church. God will give you wisdom. Really, don't be trapped by that. 
It's not like I just keep starting that sweet church and all this that I can do well. Saving. That's the saving tactic. Alright. And I really pray for this, this army here. That we don't be afraid of that. So, that's this broken skin. Don't be afraid. Number two, obey the word of God. Here. So obey the word of God. Okay, not just listen, right? You need to find listen a lot. You see, every time how you your fight, God shows you the strategy. How you do it. And repeatedly, you see, the Joshua did what God said. And uh, even said, he left nothing undone for all that the Lord commanded Moses. See, he's such a obedient person. He obeyed whatever God said. And then God made him prosper. So that's a, a strategy we need to fight is to obey the word God. Alright? So this strategy that God already showed us in the Bible, but we need to obey, not just listen. Alright? We need to obey. You have a problem conflict with a co co-worker? You have a conflict with, with a family members? Obey the word of God. You don't know how to run a business? Obey the word of God. Wow. You're going to see the breakthrough. And we obey God, it's not just okay. Oh my God, obey. Is that children like that? Joshua, go watch this. Oh, I need to watch this. Is that? No. We obey God because what? We love. We love God. Okay? You have the love of God. So when God say, do this, and you oh, I love it. All right? So just the mom tell you to wash the dish. Okay, I'm going to wash this. All right? Because you love. All right? Okay, Eric, the mom tell you, we got the garbage can. All right. Okay? We love God, so we obey Him. Okay? Not because of the word of God is a burden for us. Oh, I'm going to do this. All right? No. When you have love, and you're going to do it cheerfully, and you're going to do it more. So, that's the second way we're going to fight, is to obey the Lord God. So what's the first way to fight? Remember? Not be afraid. Second one? Obey the Lord God. Number three, take the whole land, let none remain. Alright? This comes into the trouble that for many people, they don't, they say, Wow, God is such a cruel cool God that's like kill everyone, right? Often you heard that uh, God in the Old Testament is such a wicked God. Wow, kill everybody. And the God in the New Testament, oh, he's so loving God. No, we, that's our own thinking. We try to make God fit in our own thinking. God, yesterday, today, tomorrow, never change. And God actually through the Old Testament show us what's our real condition. Why Joshua need to purge entire inhabitants? Because that's because of God's judgment. God is a holy God, and He cannot let any sin behind. And same thing, I guess that's what I talk about. When you clean the house, would you purposely let the garbage put it in the corner? I say, I'll clean everyone, okay? I clean the entire place. And, you put, and then you put the garbage in your living room. And you say, oh, my house is all so clean. But this garbage is stuck in your living room. Is that clean? No, right? He goes, of course, he wants to clean everything. And the same thing, God wants his people his, to clean everything. Because that garbage is stuck in your living room. It goes real low for the whole house. So if any sin, the tiny one in our life, it going to affect our whole life. And this is why the Bible says, God has Joshua. We need to destroy all this because God doesn't want Israel to be contaminated by those Canaanites. Okay? This is the warning for us. Doesn't mean today we're gonna go out and kill all the believers. No, right? But there's a symbol like God hates those things. And one day God's judgment will come. So we need to realize how severe this problem is. So Joshua, 
that nothing before, no one before. Alright. So exam our life. Do you still hide something? God, I can give you all this, but let me hide this, right? If the husband can I say say to the wife, say, I love you Monday to Friday. And we can uh, uh, go out with someone else. Is that love? No, no right? Who we'll take that, right? Of course he's gonna love me whole every day, 24 by 7, right? So God said this, God wants us to love him with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our soul. And don't let anything cry. So repeat it, right? <coughs> this year, when you look at this, you can find something repeat, you can see. Destroy everything. Destroy everything. Because the sin is going to affect us. Last one. That's great news. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. You may see all these enemies and all oh, these. You think, about, oh God, I couldn't get rid of this sin. This problem has been with me since I was born. But God said, I fight for you. I send my son Jesus Christ to die for you. So I get rid of this sin. So he fight for us. Repeat it, see through this chapter say, the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. In one hand you can see what well, Joshua and Israel they're fighting, fighting, but another you see actually is God fighting for them. Wow. Can you see is it acting in the movie? You can see that? Well, wow, Joshua fighting actually is God behind. Right? Just like uh, <clears throat> you know the kid pray something and then they couldn't of uh, kids to try to put the ball into the basketball, okay? Oh, so tall, couldn't get, right? And then the father will lift up the boys and then doom for the boy. And sometimes that's what God did. He had a desire to fight and then God fight for us. Actually, it's because the battle belongs to the Lord. This gives us great confidence, right? If we're in ease, wow, it's not me. Actually, the battle is belongs to God. Wow, isn't that what a great comfort for us? Now do you have a bigger desire to acquire the land now? God give us the promised land. And yes, this enemy did. And they will have battle. And a long battle. But God said, do not be afraid. Just obey my word. And just follow it. And I think I'll do it for you. What a great news for Christian life. Do you have something that is still so afraid you don't want to get it? God fighting for us. The victory will come. The victory will come. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord has spoken to Moses and Joshua gave it for inheritance to Israel according to their tribal allotment and the land had rest for if you look at Hebrew, if you remember, the rest, this term is very important. The, the Hebrew especially talk about the Joshua's actually couldn't provide this rest. Only in Jesus. This is just a symbol. Only in Jesus we can have a rest. Alright? We're going to have a rest. The world has a tribulation, but in Jesus we have a rest. And inheritance is also a, a very important word in the Bible. Inheritance. What's inheritance mean? What's inheritance mean? Pass down. Pass down. Do you need to earn it? No. Right? Think about it. if your father is Steve Jobs. You speak to your kid. Your father is Steve Jobs. Wow. He, he inherits whatever he has, right? And what's our inheritance? Our inheritance is in Christ Jesus. Ooh. Whatever power, whatever presence in Jesus Christ, we inherit that. Can you imagine that? God wants to give us such great inheritance in Christ Jesus. You don't need to be built against the Father. You have heavenly Father. You're going to pass through all these good things. And we need to get it. Finally, Right? That's the 12 tribe that have. Get their lands. Right? But 
but the mission never complete. Right? If we continue to look at the Bible, it never ended there. So as we look at the book of Joshua, until next week, in the last time we're going to talk about Joshua in September, we're going to talk about new books. Let's take time to think about the message of Joshua. We were talking about Joshua finding the kind of way, the kind of way. And we talked about many times all this. I really hope that we can really take this time to soak into the Word of God and think what other land God can have prepared for you. Do you see a promised land there? And do you see that's good? Do you see that your spouse is a promise and God given to you? It's not a mistake. Do you see your family is God prepared for you? It's not a mistake. And then you fight for it. You fight for your family. Whatever situation is, do you see your company, your workplace, your life is God promised for you? It's not a mistake. But yet there's still many things God wants you to do. So that's do not be afraid. That's get on our feet. Quietly. Any step we take, we step on, God will give to us. And God will fight for us because the battle belongs to the Lord. For our whole church, similar like we're gonna have this land. Alright, we got it already, okay? We said we got it. We signed a contract with it. That's guaranteed, alright? The rest of the money, God only provides. But we don't know how. But God will do it through us. Not just through our big uh, rich donor, alright? I, I really pray, every kid's here, alright? If you don't have money, ask for your parents, okay? Ask for your parents, ask for your uncle. I want to participate in this project. Alright. I want to fight for this. And then when we have the victory, and you say, ah, oh, I have time. So may God help us realize our life is a battle. And we're going to win. But not win by winning, we're sitting there. We're going to win by the press, by all going with following the word of God. And see how God will do for us. And have faith in our The bell, the Lord is coming. So stand up.
will depend. Thank you, Lord. Give us the strength that these soldiers together will fight. So many people stay in the darkness. Oh, Lord, we're going to fight it. We're going to win the battle of the kingdom of God, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to see your kingdom expand. All this the inheritance you give to us. Forever.